from my years young in days of youth, God did make known to me his truth, and called me from our native place, for to enjoy the means of grace. In wilderness he did me guide, and in strange lands for me provide. In fears and wants, through weal and woe, a pilgrim passed I, to and fro. I think William Bradford knew they were on a journey in this world towards heaven. They didn't know quite how they would get there or where they would finally meet their end but they were transient citizens of the world. And they were on a journey towards purity. That's what they sought. That's what took them out of England. That's what took them from Holland over to the New World. At the time, they were a very, very small group of very extreme people. And if we'd never heard of them ever again, nobody would be surprised. The fact that they are, in the long term, extraordinarily successful, that they found the world's greatest democracy, throws retrospective luster. They weren't the people you would automatically expect to be founding a new outpost of the British Empire. These were normal people under extraordinary circumstances, and it ends up being as much a story of survival as it is a story of origins. If you ask people, where does America start, they'll say, it starts in Plymouth Rock. Despite the fact that Jamestown was founded in 1607 and Plymouth was founded in 1620, it became our story of national origins. The fascinating thing then about the Pilgrim story is how this tiny group of people managed to get by and managed to tell the story in such a way as to erase that whole other history. There's been a tremendous amount of memory produced around the pilgrims. But there's also been a lot of forgetting. That memory is very selective. And part of what we've forgotten is how close suffering and violence were to one another. So to look at what's been remembered and let that shed light on what's been forgotten is an important exercise when we're thinking about something that has been so central to our national imagination.